Katie Ann Sterling. I am from Jamaica. I am a PhD student at the University of Aberdeen and a research assistant with iCare. My primary research focuses on stroke care and medications given to patients with stroke. Hello, I am Clarissa de Vries. I am from the Netherlands. Um, I am uh, now a researcher working for the University of Aberdeen as part of the iCare project. And iCare stands for the Industrial Center for Artificial Intelligence Research in Digital Diagnostics. So um, artificial intelligence is the development of computer systems or technologies that can perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. So um, we use, currently we're using narrow AI and we can find this in um, chat boxes, Google search engines, um, Meta or Facebook uses AI algorithms to give you personalized ads. Netflix and Amazon shows viewing or reading recommendations and a similar use of narrow AI in healthcare where AI technologies being developed now are trained to perform specific tasks with specific outcomes. AI algorithms can be used to support diagnosis, which is the identification of the nature of illness or disease and prognosis, which is the likely course of the disease or illness, or to recommend treatment for patients. So artificial intelligence, so different to previous um, technologies, computer technologies, where you tell the computer uh, program exactly what steps to execute, so you get a certain answer. With artificial intelligence, you give it a large amount of data and you tell it what you want it to do. So in then it learns for itself, it learns the rules itself, how to execute it. So, so what I've done in my work is we have looked at um, a breast screening AI tool that is available at the moment, which, which, so meaning that it can be bought uh, and we wanted to test how well it works. Um, it has previously been tested on other cases around the world, actually within the UK and also European data, but we don't know how well it works on our local data set here in Aberdeen. Artificial intelligence tool that I have looked in, at in my work is one that looks at a breast uh, mammography image and then says, we think this woman needs to come back for additional investigations or not to determine if this woman might have a breast cancer. The AI that I am currently working on is we're testing how we can use artificial intelligence in the management of acute stroke. So Canon Medical Research Europe Limited is currently developing an AI algorithm using data from stroke and suspected stroke patients in Glasgow and Aberdeen in collaboration with researchers and clinicians from the universities and the NHS. One of the tasks of the AI algorithm will be to support radiologists and stroke clinicians, just doctors that, stroke, that treat stroke patients in assessing brain scans and making treatment decisions faster and more accurately. This is particularly important is in stroke as faster interventions can lead to fewer patients with stroke-related disability and also to save more lives. Something like the screening tool for mammography, so for breast screening, potentially that could lead to cost savings, but also time savings. Um, maybe women can get their results quicker and they will know whether or not they need to be recalled. AI can be beneficial in healthcare with the main benefits being to improve patient care. And AI can improve patient care by improving disease detection. AI algorithms can process large amounts of data very quickly without needing breaks or getting tired. Some studies have found that AI is faster and sometimes more accurate or just as accurate as 
assistance healthcare professionals in disease diagnosis. In particular for doctors or in medicine, AI algorithms that can automatically detect illnesses such as cancer or stroke can improve the performance and accuracy of doctors in their jobs. And if the AI helps doctors to do jobs that normally take up a lot of time, then this frees the doctors to do other important tasks and also allows them to focus on seeing and treating patients rather than on other work or data analysis. Yes, so artificial intelligence can have bias and this is largely will be related to the biases of the people who um, design the artificial intelligence but and the data that is inputted. So if you, for example, have an artificial intelligence that is supposed to do speech recognition and you only use data that from people who speak American English, it's not gonna work as well as people who speak British English. So the answer is uh, yes, because AI algorithms depend on data. So if there are problems or biases in the data, then the final AI product will have issues in generalizability. Um, so if the, for instance, the source of the data is not representative of the population you want to use it on, then some persons can be disadvantaged by the AI system. And there are instances of um, facial recognition software being recalled because they're not very good at recognizing faces or people of color and may have been due to the AI being trained on fewer data points or images of faces of color. So this is a very important issue. So in, for, for my project, um, we're trying to develop an AI algorithm to assess brain scans, which can help to um, help radiologists and, and stroke clinicians to decide whether to give a treatment or not and to help to make the decision faster. Um, I know that they're, they're trying to develop AI algorithms for looking at chest x-rays and it can be applied in COVID-19 to decide if a person is positive or negative and to try to decide the best mode of treatment. I am a pharmacist by profession and I worked in uh, hospital and community pharmacies for a few years in Jamaica and I decided that I wanted to try something different <laughs> and try um, coming into research. Um, my grandpa had a stroke and he didn't survive it. so. This work is it's just very personal and um, I, I want to, to you know help to improve um, stroke care and I hope that maybe eventually down the line I can um, take all that I've learned here and maybe you know apply it to somewhere to apply it, um, in Jamaica maybe even by getting like or helping to develop stroke data sets or you know trying to get a reform in the way that we treat stroke patients. Um, I did my first degree actually in electrical engineering and actually my mom passed away and she actually also had a stroke and she had multiple health conditions but I think that was the turning point for me that I wanted to to help people and it was a real moment of what am I doing with my life where am I going um, so that's why I did the medical physics masters and I did a PhD in medical imaging. So this, um, yeah, <laughs> so it was really related to you saying that it's personal and I think it is for, for a lot of people. Um, and that, that has been my driving force to keep going as well, to try and have a positive influence on the world. And um, just in general, I just think of research as you know, putting little pieces of the puzzle together. So, you know, everyone's research 
comes together and just makes a whole map and you're doing your little part <laughs> it's like a crossword puzzle so you put in your little part and somebody else puts in their part and you know eventually we'll have the full picture 